I don't replay games often, but I've been on a little bit of a PS4 kick as of late, so I decided to replay The Order 1886, which was a pretty polarizing game when it released. Um, now, it didn't review well when it came out for reasons that I'll get into. I think the score is at around like a 63 on Metacritic. IGN, I think, gave it about a 6.5, and some of the reasons that they didn't like the game were pretty valid. But I'm a simple man who enjoys simple things, and I remember having a pretty decent time with this way back when, so... After replaying it, the question is, do I still feel the same? Hey man, let's let's talk about it. Let's get into it. So for those unfamiliar, The Order um, 1886 was released in February of 2015, published by Sony and developed by Ready at Dawn, who I'm going to circle back around to later in this video. Uh, but it is essentially a third person action adventure game uh, with a heavy emphasis on cover based shooting, uh, similar to that of, you know, something like a Gears of War. And it follows the story of Sir Galahad, who is a knight at the round table uh, in this al alternative Victorian era London, which has some pretty heavy steampunk vibes. And, you know, the knights are having to battle against these lichens, against vampires, against anti-government rebels. They got their own like little inner conflicts going on. Now, I, I don't know, bro, if you if you got beef with lichens and vampires, like if they both don't like you, you actually might be the problem. But that's that's besides the point. Now, the order 1886 um had a lot of ambitious ideas it had a lot of flash it had a lot of style it had a, it had a great look uh but the substance is what is in question with this game and i don't know it reminds me of that episode of the boondocks where like raleigh had the craziest crossover but then you found out he couldn't shoot a jump shot to save his life it you know it might not be that bad but it, it there are definitely some flaws here i will say that um, but there's also some good here that I think deserve to be praised. I, I don't think this game was was all bad, like some people would have you to believe. Um, honestly, for a game that came out in 2015, this game looks fire. This game looks amazing. Um, from the graphics to the, the character designs, like the animations, the facial expressions. This game is, is beautiful to watch in motion. Like This still holds up amazingly well. Um, now, admittedly, I would say like the aesthetic and the look definitely do do a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to the positives of this game. Um, but I'm also going to give the devs some props because uh, they tried some different stuff um, in terms of like the presentation, man. The Order 1886 feels and looks much more like a movie than an actual game. It's presented in this 2.4 by 1 aspect ratio, which gives it much more of a cinematic feel. And you can tell just by the looks of the environments, the way they use shadows, the way the cutscenes play out. You really feel that cinematic style that they were going for. Now, not everybody was a fan of this. And the real issue is, does this translate into good gameplay? Because at the end of the day, we're, regardless of the look you're going for, we are still playing a game. This is where things get get a little dicey, get a little, get a little interesting. Um, when I replayed this, the first thing that jumped out to me um was how some of the choices they made to make the game feel more cinematic uh i think led to just some really odd pacing issues um the game starts with this really long <laughs> intro with galahad having to escape captivity and during these parts you know you do just some of the basic things of the game walking moving interacting with objects but then you get introduced to one of the game's most divisive mechanics and that would be the use of quick time events now personally I didn't mind that the game used quick time events. Um, my issue is just the timing of when they chose to use them sometimes felt a little off and it just kind of disrupted the pacing of the game. Um, now I know we're supposed to be going for the cinematic feel and I've, I'm cool with that. But starting this game off with a bunch of quick time events just made this intro feel way longer than it needed to be. Now, I'm a patient man, I don't mind waiting, but bro, I had to wait like 20 plus minutes before I got into like an actual proper shootout. And that just, this is supposed to be an action game. Like, we should have been, we should have been busting shots like 15 minutes ago. <laughs> but this, this took so long to kind of just get to like the meat and the potatoes of the game. Now, to their credit, once we actually do, you know, start shooting, once we, once we get into the blicky action, it's actually a pretty solid game in my opinion. It's not going to blow you away. Doesn't do anything crazy. But the basics work just enough to be enjoyable. The cover system is solid movement feels decent you know you can run you can switch between covers you can jump over objects um i really do enjoy the melee takedown animations i thought those were a really nice addition and some of the melee takedowns are actually kind of fire and you get a decent and interesting assortment of weapons you got pistols revolvers 
rifles, shotguns, sniper rifles to some of the more abstract scientific weapons like the thermite gun and you got like some lightning cannons and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot, lot of weird <laughs> some weird guns in here but I, I kind of like them and I enjoy that some of the guns uh, have these little side functions so for example if you press R1 while you're holding the rifle it lets out this uh, like stun blast that you know it's really good for catching enemies off guard and the environmental settings where the action takes place works for me like they really nailed just the whole look and feel that they were going for um and speaking of weapons that leads me into sound design which i also have to commend um of course the voice acting in this game is good the soundtrack is good it really does have a cinematic feel to it in terms of those aspects um but boy they, these guns got some kick to them um especially that shot that shotgun is crazy Good lord, just bro, just listen to the impact of the shot. Ah! It sounds like he shot you and your astral projection when your soul tried to leave your body. Like you you not going to the afterlife after that <laughs> after that shotgun boy, you out of here. But I say that to say while the order, you know, doesn't do anything innovative, the action parts of the game. They get the job done, man. They're fun for the most part, but they do fall short in one area, and this is where quick time events kind of come back into play in a negative way. Um, and that would be the boss fights, or at least what I assumed were boss fights. So remember the lichens I talked about earlier? So you get to fight some of those, and that's cool. That's great. The lichens have really dope designs. They look the part, and you normally get like a nice, you know, intense cutscene before you're about to fight one. And they're awesome sometimes when you actually do get to straight up fight them, but like they're kind of annoying. They just hit you and run back into the shadows and it's i don't know it just kind of yeah <laughs> wasn't feeling it and then the other times that you fight them it's just reduced to like quick time events and it sucks because those moments are some of the most important moments in the game and it being reduced to a quick time event i don't know for me it just it kind of took away from what felt like it should have been a really intense gameplay moment but it just got reduced to me using this little blade and hacking away at a lichen and it kind of also disrupts the pacing and it takes you out of the story which is another issue with this game um i've heard some people say they just outright didn't like the story i'm not gonna go that far i actually thought i thought the story was was pretty solid um i think the world of the order 1886 had a lot of potential uh, like i said the world looked great the locations worked the setting worked the the, the the steampunk vibes like the whole thing they had going on with the round table uh, the lichens, the vampires, we got different characters with their own little unique personalities. We got mystery, drama, conflict, you know, the, everything you needed to tell a great story was here. Unfortunately, just the story and the world just weren't really fleshed out enough for it to all connect the way it needed to, which leads into another thing this game got dinged for heavily uh, in reviews, and that is the length of the game. Now, I don't mind a game being short, and even when this originally came out, it didn't bother me that the game was only about seven to eight hours. Um, as I get older, I'm appreciating shorter games. Uh, so even now, more in 2024, I'm glad this game was short. But I will say for the sake of world building, I think the order could have used just an extra hour or two just to fully flush out these characters. I think it could have made a huge difference and gave the story a lot more weight to it. Because once you get to the end and you roll the credits, even if you enjoyed the game like I did, it's, it just feels kind of empty just you get to the end and it's like yeah <laughs> like it, it sucks because it feels like you were finally getting somewhere like the story was finally things were moving it was going and then it just oh, stop nope game over and <laughs> that's kind of it and sadly the hopes for a sequel for the order uh yeah probably not gonna happen uh the developers at ready at dawn uh who were over at meta because uh, they actually went into making vr games uh, they got shut down uh, after two decades. So, And it, it sucks because even with its flaws, I think this game is still worth checking out if you never got to play it, especially at its current price point of $9.99, which is at, at the time of recording this video. Um, but I think, a, I think a sequel, if they just could have corrected some of the issues that they had with this game, they, they could have had a banger, man. Like These are the kinds of games that I would love to see get remade. Like The classes getting remade, that's cool. But we need to remake the games that had just a ton of potential, just maybe miss the mark in a few areas like this one did. Because like I said, with, with just a few adjustments to the gameplay approach and the world building, you could have had this, you could have had an, uh, there's an amazing game in here somewhere that could have been made. Uh, but instead, we just got a game that was, like, it was cool. 
<laughs> we could have got an amazing game, but we just got something that was cool. That works for me. Doesn't work for a lot of people. Didn't work for a lot of people based on the reviews. Um, and it, it sucks, man. That we I really wish this game would have gotten a second chance, but it seems like this is all we got. This is all we're ever going to get. And that's kind of where the Order 1886 is. Um, yeah, that's just... R.I.P. <laughs> but, hey, man, I remember you, the Order 1886. I know a lot of the world didn't like you. They didn't appreciate you. But you were all right with me, man. I had a fun time, and I really wish you could have got another chance. But, unfortunately, that just, just wasn't in the cards, man. But, yeah, if you played the Order 1886, please let me know your thoughts on the game. Would love to hear them in the comments below. My name is Serial Sensei. Y'all stay safe. Y'all stay hydrated. And I will see you on the next video.